If I solve for this piece, I just multiply both sides by delta x. Okay, we've done a lot of math work. Do you feel okay with it so far? Raise your hand if you feel okay with it so far. A lot of theory, right? We haven't done anything actually. Well, we manipulated it algebraically, but we haven't done an example yet. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to notice that this piece right here is the same as this piece right here. I'm going to put that thing in instead of it. So L sub K equals, we got the square root. Inside the square root, we have delta x squared plus this big fat piece of junk. We're going to replace with this big fat piece of junk. Instead of this, we have f of x of k minus f of x of k minus 1. That's that's that. We're going to have f prime x of k dot, or x k dot, times delta x. Don't forget it has to be squared. Are you still okay with it? Yeah. Do you have any questions so far on it? Do you see where the stuff is coming from? Well, there's not much we can do with this. There's something that we can do with that. That's what we're going to do right now. Oh, let's see. Let's do one more thing here. Let's break this up a little bit. Let's just do... So far, so good? By the way, did you guys have any questions over here? Because I'm going to race and continue. So you understood the idea of cutting it up, right? Finding the length of each segment using the Pythagorean theorem. Now we're just working that down. So take note of that. Hopefully you have that. The, the important part was to get our substitution done from here to here. That was the idea. I guess I do have some room over here I can work on. So from here, do you see that we can factor out a delta x squared? So we're going to have 1 f prime of x k dot squared times delta x squared, but that is going to be in a big old bracket. I'm going to draw it in black so you can see a little bit better. If you factor out the delta x squared, you need to track it around this whole thing, just like that. You okay with that? Now, roots are kind of awesome because you can split them about apart by multiplication. So do you see that I can have a square root of this first thing times a square root of the second thing? But a square root of delta x squared will give you just delta x. So next step is going to be L sub k. This times that. Notice how I'm putting the stop after the square root right there. We take the square root of delta x squared, it becomes delta x. The only reason why we can do this, ladies and gentlemen, please notice this, is because we were able to factor out the delta x squared from right here. We were able to factor it out, create a big bracket that's being multiplied and you can split up multiplication. You can't split up addition. We could not have done it here. You can't just take square root and take square root. It doesn't happen. You have to factor it, split it off, do all that nonsense, and then, then you can do it. How do you feel okay with all we've done so far? Hey, that's the length. That's the length for one single section. Tell me how I find multiple sections. A summation would help me find multiple sections. Very good. So that's for one. 
So here's for all of them, but it's an approximation. How do I make it a better approximation? Yeah, as n goes to infinity, that means instead of just a few cuts within there, we're going to make an infinite number of cuts that causes this distance, remember that was the distance between those points, to go to zero. It causes the arbitrary point to be smashed in between there. So yeah, you have a little distance because otherwise you can't find the length of that, right? You can't find the length of nothing. So it's a little distance, but it's so small, it doesn't make any difference between the actual line, the secant line, and the distance of our arc. So take a limit that L equals a limit of this thing. Now, when you take a limit, we've noticed just by, by practice what these pieces mean. Can you tell me what the limit of a sum becomes? And it goes from where you start to where you stop. The square root, hey, that's a square root. The 1 is a 1. Plus is a plus. F prime, look at, we're going to have a first derivative inside of our integral. Isn't that interesting? It's kind of weird. But that's what that says. It says you have a first derivative of a function. What's xk dot become? Just s. Don't forget to square it. And what does the delta x become? Yes. That's it. What we've just done is something that's freaking awesome. We just found the length of the curve between two points. Is that not cool? Very cool. We know how to find the length of a curve. You draw a curve, if you know the function to it, we find the length. Now that clock's a little fast. We're going to do one example because I don't want to leave you hanging on this. Uh, I'll explain something in a little while about why we are going to go over a little bit. Um, but stick with me, please. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Trust me, I'm doing you a favor. So this is a length of a curve. Note that this is along which axis? So these are back to matching up, along the x in terms of x, along the y in terms of y. It matches. I'll give you one example here. Let's say I would like you to find the length of the curve. This. On that. I want to right now just practice setting this up, making sure we see where these pieces are coming from. That's important for us to do. So what's the first thing, if we're going along, well, it doesn't really matter, let's put it another way. Whether you think of this in terms of x or y, the length of the curve doesn't change. The length of the curve is the length of the curve. So do what's easiest for you. The volume of a region is the volume of a region, right? It doesn't matter what you do it in as long as you do it correctly. So whether you want to treat this along the x-axis or along the y-axis doesn't matter. Use what, what's given to you. Now this is in terms of x. We're going to do it along the x-axis. Now the process doesn't change at all, really. There's no x's or y's in here. That Everything's coming from your function, so it's good to go. Looking at, at our, our formula, what's the first thing you're going to do? Say, say it again. 
kind of derivative? Yeah, you gotta have a derivative. That's nice. Find a derivative. If I do the derivative, don't forget how to do a, a darn derivative, all right? Some people just miss the little constants, the little constants there. Man, it's a simple mistake. No, it's killing you. Not simple anymore. Three comes down, no more one third. You just get x squared. That is, well, negative one fourth. Oh, well, negative one over four x squared. Can someone double check that for me, please? It's right, isn't it? So find your derivative. Notice I moved my x up. I left the one fourth alone. Move my x up. Negative one comes down in front. It's negative one fourth. Subtract. And the exponent becomes negative 2, moving back down, you get over x squared. If we set up our integral, where are we starting? Um, one, two, one, three. On inside the integral, we're going to have a square root. We're going to have 1 plus. On the inside of that square root, you're going to have x squared minus 1 over 4x squared squared dx. How many will feel okay with the setup, at least the setup? What's your next step? Remember, these have to work out, have to be able to be manipulated, or you can't do them. There's not going to be a substitution. There's nothing to substitute. Okay, they have to be algebraically manipulated for this class in order for you to even do them. So what are you going to do first? Square. Square. Yeah, you're going to square. What you're going to get is... x to the fourth minus one half x squared. No, I'm doing. It. I'm sorry. I need to work it out. I can't do that one in my head. One sixteen minus x to the fourth minus one sixteen one half minus yeah. and then x to the fourth. It's just minus one half. Okay. I think we'll leave it for there. We'll talk about how to do the rest of this later on. We'll hold you too long.